Hi everyone, so today I want to do something watercolor related and really just make myself <laughs> work with watercolor which I have to tell you I've been sitting here for five minutes and it's been very difficult because I was thinking what should I paint? Well, I don't know. Um, once I started getting into this mixed media um, gorgeousness it feels like um, like I'm a child in a toy store and I have to pick one toy and I'm sort of thinking that's quite impossible <laughs> but anyways I'll try to do it and I'm gonna do something floral so this is my Stillman and Burn um, sketchbook which has kind of um, like botanical pieces mostly so I try not to do anything too whimsical in there and there's a little watercolor study um, but again kind of keeping it more realistic looking um, so here is this is a passion fruit quick illustration I did literally within minutes back when my son wasn't going to the nursery and um, I've got a blank page here so I want to do something on there now I think I'm going to do lavender purely because it's nice and simple and I haven't painted any flowers in a very very long time the other thing I have allowed myself to use today is this Dr. Peach Martin's Bombay White India ink and I'm going to use it as highlights uh, just very little bit of it and I think I'm going to dilute it in this little tray uh, with a bit of water so it's not as stark and opaque Okay, so I'm intending this video to be relatively fast because all of my mixed media videos tend to be quite long. So I'm going to do this in real time. So here we go. I'm just going to go up and down and create a line. Then I'm drawing out of my mind thinking what does lavender look like? Now it may not end up looking like this in real life but um, I'm just going to go with it so the intention here like I said is sort of to keep it realistic but maybe with uh, your own signature style uh, and not have it too whimsical um, with the whimsical I have separate sketchbooks so I think there should be a lot more of this so these are the closed buds that haven't opened yet and I'm going to also draw some that just about are opening so I think this would be good for someone who isn't very confident with drawing uh, but wants to have it, give it a go and this this type of a drawing is, is not that complicated so just keep on going and creating little buds like that and then as we come to the bottom so the idea is it kind of looks like a little cone like this that the flowers get a bit bigger and sort of stick out a little bit more and the way lavender works is that the flowers come off it or off the main stem so it's not like the flowers are connected so my task here is just to give the flowers different shapes Um, like that so I think yeah that that would do and then for the leaves it's got these very thin kind of like rosemary leaves almost and that essentially is what I will try to Create. I'm going to give them different angles 
so it doesn't look too boring. So I think, yes, I'm happy with it. So I'm going to keep it quite minimal. Okay, I think I'm going to go with my Princeton uh, round three, purely because and the Jackson's quill brush, which I like to use, is a little bit, takes too much water for this size of an um, illustration. So I want to avoid that because I want to have a little bit more control. Okay, so let's see. I'm going to use this daisy porcelain dish to mix up purple colors. There's a bit of blue and a bit of purple. And then I'm just going to start by watercoloring. I'm not watercoloring the entire um, the entire flower because what I want to achieve is different tones of, of a purple. Some of them a bit more bluey some of them um, a bit kind of dulled down like now I'm going to go into the Mayan blue genuine and that will dull down the purple slightly and give us a different different look and I'm going to add it into different flowers like so just to create a bit more interest and breaking it down nicely. So this is the only purple that I have in my palette, which is the lavender. You can see all the the list of all of my watercolors in the links that I include in under every single video. Uh, just in case you're interested, because I know I am like that. If there is a watercolorist that I like on YouTube, I want to know exactly what colors they're using. So. If you are like that, you can check it out. Um, so I don't tend to like purples and that's why I don't have any other purples. But I could mix one if I wanted to, simply by going into cobalt blue and then into something like, let's see, this is a quinacridon magenta. So that's going to have a little bunch of color. So I don't need that much. So you can see immediately I can mix up a purple and then add it just in a few areas like that in some of these parts. So to make it look a bit more realistic what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a bit more of that magenta and now kind of mix all of the colors together and I'm going to have this lovely kind of bright purple. What I'm going to do now is just go into the bottom parts of these flowers and just add a detail. So just like that, just to make it look a little bit more realistic and you can see it looks nice and lovely. If the water is already dried up in certain areas what I'm going to do is dry my brush wash it first dry it make sure there isn't excess water and then just pull out and blend this watercolor in so that it's not it doesn't have like a you know strong edge a bit more blended out and looks a bit more natural that way and then I'm also going to add that purple here. So that's it. And at the end, I'm going to, I have this lovely green sitting here, so I'm just gonna use that. And let's see if I'm going to mix it with the purple next door, I'm going to create this lovely grayish green, which is the exact color for um, lavender. 
bit more green actually. So it's not important to stay within the lines because you can see it's very the um, very fine the leaves so you're not going to be able to do, do perfect and it, that's not the idea of it anyway. Um, so what we're going to do is now add a little bit more of this green and then just add it into this super thin stalk. Now in those areas where it's too fine just avoid putting it all together. So what I'm doing is skipping this area here and then just adding it in certain other areas. So if you have made a mistake somewhere and it's um, gone over the edge, what you can do with a clean brush, wet the area and then try to pick it up with a tissue. Sometimes it will work, it all depends whether the watercolor was staining or not. And then I think I will add just a little bit of this green in these little connecting parts like so. There we go. And that is finished. So that's my lavender. And oh my god, I had a lot of fun actually. This was nice and short. It's going to be easy to add it. And it's going to satisfy a lot of you because I know how much you love watercolor and floral illustration. So there you go. I mean, it is my interpretation um, of a lavender and just painted it out of my mind so I didn't have an image to look at. And it kind of it does look a little bit like lavender. Um, you could think of maybe other flowers as well, but it looks all right. I mean, it's not too bad in terms of um, similarity. Okay, so I'm going to now shake up my Bombay ink because it's very pigmented and from my understanding it settles down at the bottom. So I'm going to shake it up. I hope that is enough. And now I'm going to use the pipette to load the watercolor or the ink rather. And then I'm going to use just a drop because I won't need that much. And now I'm going to go into a, a fine brush and just add touches so let's see this is a three zero so this is as fine as it gets so I'm just going to add a few droplets like two droplets of it and then I want to mix up different opacity levels of this ink so this one is going to be a bit more this is like medium opaque, this one is quite quite light and this is the, the strongest one. So then I'm going to go into the dry areas and just add tiny little bits so I can see when when it is too light I will need to go in. Now first of all I'm, what I'm interested in is um, to see whether the watercolor will be lifted from underneath or not whether it will stay like that because some inks they can actually start pulling that watercolor pigment or any pigment underneath and then it turns the color of that pigment rather than staying white so I'm quite intrigued so I'm just adding it into a couple of areas and then I'm going going to go into this white the whitest of the white as well and add it in a couple of areas. So the white seems to be a little bit too strong for my liking. So I'm just going to take it off and apply it like that. Okay, so it depends where and how strong you want it. Like I said, if the watered down ink starts to pull up the pigment, then you have to top it up with the white one. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and quickly dry it and then show you the close up because you probably won't be able to see it from now. Okay, so I have dried it up and actually it seems like you can go with the fully opaque 
Bombay ink because it still becomes quite translucent and I don't know whether the watercolor was still a little bit um, wet to the touch or why that happened because when I was painting it on it looked quite opaque so let's see what I'm gonna do it now whether I can build it up a little I mean it looks nice it looks quite sort of natural but just for those of you that wanted to have like a stronger highlight that probably wouldn't have done it for you so now I have built it up I'm going to go ahead and dry it again and see if that stays a bit more opaque like this okay so it does look like you can build it up a little bit more to a stronger opacity if you wish to do that but that's basically it for today and i hope you enjoyed it and thanks for watching and see you soon